Oh, I think the concept of landscape, if, if ministers of finance and ministers of economics could understand landscapes, the world would be a better place. I mean, isn't it interesting that uh, ministers of commerce spend millions and millions of dollars running around the world, having investment promotion seminars, are trying to persuade foreign companies to come in and build factories, whilst on their doorstep, the landscape of the country uh, is just waiting to be invested in, in a win-win-win way. Win in the sense of higher incomes, win in the sense of more resilient crops, more resilient food security, and also low carbon because you sequester carbon in the soil and in the vegetation and you turn what is bad up there in the sky to something good down here on Earth. Consider, Consider for example, that there are two billion hectares in the world that are degraded. Degraded land, bad for the economy, bad for people, dreadful for the environment and for climate change. That's twice the size of China that is degraded, just waiting to be invested in. We've mapped all these areas, we've looked at the economics of these areas, and in fact, uh, the rates of return economically, socially, environmentally are huge. Uh, why isn't it happening? It's because whilst ministers of agriculture get it, communities in rural areas get it, there is no movement. Consider, for example, mat maternal mortality. For 30 years, it went nowhere. 10 years ago, maternal mortality was the most failing MDG. In the last 10 years, it's been reduced by 50%, by half. Nobody would have dreamt that. Why? Because good evidence and demonstration that change could be made and political engagement so that it became a movement. So whether you're an African or an Asian head of state, you wanted to be part of addressing this problem. That's what we need on landscapes now. Well, uh, first we need, we need real evidence that will persuade a Minister of Finance, a Minister of Planning, or a Minister of Economics, and will persuade large corporate leaders and so on. Um, we're assembling that now. There are now enough examples, which is the second thing you need. You need to be able to go to Burkina Faso and say, hey, it actually is working there. You need to go to Rwanda, where they've said, hey, we're going to re-green two million hectares. Brazil now is getting very excited. You need to demonstrate that it's working, it's making sense, it's good economics, it's good politics, and then you have to elevate it. And next year, um, uh, Ban Ki-moon will be hosting a heads of state uh, heads of government meeting on climate change. Now, wouldn't it be great if in addition to discussing uh, the negotiation that they would launch, you know, some movements that would make a big difference. This is one. The, the problem is that most leaders are not engaged enough in the lives of rural dwellers. And so um, that needs to change. And, and instead of agriculture being perceived as a politically delicate issue, therefore we shouldn't discuss it. My goodness me, agriculture and landscapes is the best political opportunity to make a breakthrough.